project we're going to be doing is inspired through the amethyst stone. Uh, I've already gone ahead and pre-painted my pots just by using the interior paint I explained earlier in the course. Uh, so this has already got two co coats on it. I did it at the same time when I was dyeing all my crystal pieces. So now we're going to go ahead and just lay out the foundation um, of our pattern and get the uh, get the base coat painted. So what we're going to do is just create a little bit of a pattern. So I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be a little bit jagged because natural stone obviously is not it's not perfect by any means. I'm going to bring this out a little bit. Oops, that's a little sharp. And then we're going to really bring it down over here. All right. There. So I think I'm going to stay with that. If I can find my lid somewhere. I'm just going to place this down. So I just have these moved in like a triangle shape, these cups. So if I need to place it down, I can. And I'm just going to take my white acrylic paint and kind of fill in the lines. That should be enough. And for this, I'll be using a one inch brush. You can use any painter brush that you like. Whatever you feel most comfortable with. So as you can see, this is probably going to take one or like, it's just going to, well, not one, but it's just going to probably take two or three different coats, um, just depending on how well it dries. Don't mock my painting skills. just so you get the general idea of what to do here. So yeah, that's basically the idea. Um, it looks kind of silly right now, but this is the foundation. This is basically the outline so that we know uh, we can follow, follow it all with the, uh, the crystals here. So now that the base coat is dry, we're going to go in with the shading color. So what I typically like to do um, is I go a little bit lighter around the edges here and then I'm going to go darker in the center. So this just gives the outline of where I'm going to start putting my crystals. So I'm going to do like the white along the edge here and then it's going to gradually get darker into the center. And we just want to mimic that with our paint as well. So I'm just going to drop a couple of drops here in my little Dixie cup. And then all I do is just take a fluffy painter's brush, whatever size you'd like. And just gently go in. So I'm starting in the center and then I gradually want to push that out to the um, to the sides and then that'll kind of that'll give our ombre effect and it doesn't have to be perfect once you have the glass pieces on here you won't really see this as much um, it'll just be a little bit of a shadow shadowing
So, and I would like personally, you can do this however you want. But I like to have a little bit of a thicker white line and then gradually bringing in that color. That's just personal preference. You can do it however you want. Now, to be able to get a darker color, you could either use a darker paint, but I'm just gonna use the paint that I have and I'm just gonna add in a couple of drops of the, uh, the alcohol dye, or the alcohol ink, and then that's gonna give me more of a darker color. I'm just going to mix it together until I get the color that I'm going for. And again, it's all personal preference. I want it to be quite dark, so I'm going to be quite generous with the dye. really make it a custom shade. I'm going to go in with a little bit of a blue dye. Now again, if this is a little out of your budget and you're just getting started, you don't have to go and blow a lot of money on all these different alcohol or alcohol inks. Like I said in the very beginning of the class, you can just use uh, the food coloring. It works just as well. And once everything is sealed in with the resin, you will never be able to tell and it's going to be locked in. So you don't have to worry about it, like the color fading or wiping off or, you know, just not lasting. All right, a few more little drops here. And like I said, it doesn't have to, this doesn't have to be perfect. You can see it's a little bit darker. I'm gonna go in and just in the center here. That you can see that shade difference. And that's what I want. Sorry, cuts are quite loud. I'm just gonna put my other hand on there so we don't get that constant squeaking. Just like that, we have our base outline. And we have officially completed step two. Now for step three, we can go in and we're gonna go in and we're going to add in the, the glass crystals. All right, it's here. It's finally here. We've done all this prep. We've done all this work. Now we can have some fun and we can attach the, the glass pieces to our to our pot or a planter and we are on the home stretch so i should show you um, i talked about this earlier in the class uh, i use the jb super weld um, you can use gorilla glue or any instant instant uh, super bond glue will work just fine make sure you are wearing your gloves make sure you're wearing a mask and even eye protection like the fumes on this stuff is pretty they're pretty strong, so your safety, of course, is number one. Um, you want to be comfortable when you do this. You don't want to be irritating your eyes or your skin or your lungs, so just make sure you're taking care of yourself. So I'm going to start on the outside here. Um, I've gone ahead and I've broken up some more clear, clear pieces, and I'm going to mix that in with the, uh, the pre-made iridescent iridescent ones that I, I made earlier. So we're just gonna start. 
we're just going to go a little bit at a time. So I squeeze a tiny bit out and then I kind of just drag it across. And this stuff dries pretty quickly so you don't want to go and do a large area at once. Just carefully place those on. don't recommend doing um, the hot glue for this. I've used the hot glue. I find it actually more difficult to use and you go through a lot, a lot of glue. So it's actually, it's not the most cost efficient. I've noticed that this is actually the cheaper and more effective way of doing this. Most effective. See, talking is hard when I do this. Okay. The outline is the most tedious portion of this all. Once you get the outline down, why is that not sticking? It's okay. Go back over that a little bit. Um, like I was saying, once you get the outline down, then the rest of it will come quite easier or a lot easier. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish this whole outline and then I'm gonna meet you guys in for the second stage. All right, so I've got the outline done and I've let it set and settle. Um, just be careful when you are doing this. I, even though it is glued on, they are still, yeah, they're still, <laughs> they still they'll still fall off. Um, when we're completed, we can go in and just make whatever touch-ups we need to do. Don't fret, like if you have what I just had and one thing falls off, don't uh, focus on that too much. We can just go back to it at the end. Uh, when you are working with, with the glue, try not to get too ahead of yourself and uh, start going around and twisting and turning too fast. Oh my goodness. Uh, too fast or too quickly that the glue isn't settling. Just make sure that you are taking the time and allowing the glue to settle. Otherwise it will start leaking through and you're just gonna have an absolute mess and then you're gonna have a lot of touching up to do afterwards. So just avoid that if you can. So our second phase, I'm gonna go in with these translucent, I finally figured out the word, the translucent purple that we created earlier. I took out some of the bigger pieces because I just, I don't feel like they're gonna work for, for this particular piece. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go through the, uh, the lighter, area with those. Let's give you a quick little idea of what I need. So same thing. Um, I'm going to have a couple of these, like some are going to lie flat, some are going to be upright. I'm going to lie one flat here. And that just gives that illusion of that bumpy ridge that these crystals normally would have. Do a little bit more. Sometimes I get over focused and I need to make sure that I'm still in the camera. You guys can still see it. That would be rude. Just a bit more corner. Um, 
Another thing too, I uh, because it's narrower at the bottom here, I made sure I put smaller pieces at the bottom. It just it worked out that way, and it's just it's easier to do and it keeps the keeps the shape a lot better. So I'm gonna finish the second layer here, and then we're gonna come in for the final. All right, final stage. So now we're gonna go in and I'm gonna use that metallic, a solid metallic. And I am gonna bring that into the center. Can see already how it's already starting to take shape. You're starting to see the the end result. Okay. Just like that. So I'm gonna let, <clears throat> just like the other the other two stages, I'm gonna let this settle. Once I let it dry, I'm gonna tilt tilt it up and let the rest fall. And then we're gonna take whatever or uh, do whatever touch ups we need to before we we get into the last final steps. So I have let this settle and dry a little bit. Now I'm just going to take my glue gun. I have a extra, extra stick here because I'm probably going to need it. And I'm just going to create a line around the border of the white here. I'm shaking. Here, let's adjust that. I'm just going to repeat that one more time. I want to try to make the layer as high as I can. So it's going to give the illusion that this is where um, the rock forms. And then it just kind of drops down like how a natural stone would. But like everything else, you can do it however you like. Let's see, 
see, here I go, getting it out of the camera. second to dry and while we do that I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna add a little bit to the top like a little bit of uh, the glass pieces to the top I'm gonna grab my painters tape never used this yet brand new this step isn't really necessary I just find it easier to uh, to get the rocks up on the top here and get them to stay so then I just put it along the top here. Just add a little bit on the ledge. Try not to get it on the tape, like I just did. That's okay, not the end of the world. I'm gonna go just with the clear. Push it on along like that. Now, obviously, not all of it's gonna stay, but there'll be a good few chunks that will. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and I'm just gonna touch up in areas where I just wanna see a little bit more of the, uh, the crystal. Then I'm going to take the regular Just a couple areas that I wanted to do. And you still want to be extra careful. And I'm going to add some glue to that one. I don't want that one to really drop or fall off. Before I add it, I'll just add some more of the darker area. So I'm going to take the metallic. pieces. going to revisit our black interior paint. Um, I'm just going to take a two inch brush, but like everything else, you can use whatever size of brush you want. And I go along 
and I am going to paint around the edges here. dropped my camera. Oh goodness. It would have been awful. Alright. So and this doesn't have to be perfect either. Um, you almost want to have it actually push into the rocks a little bit. It just gives it a more realistic look, at least I think it does. But if you like it to be more uniformed, then you might want to get like a smaller brush, um, like a more precision brush, maybe something a little bit bigger than that, but you, you get my idea. I'm just going to do this with my left hand. That's not going to end well for me. Let's repeat the same thing on this side. Get a picture of my nose there. All right. Let's go along the bottom edge here. So this is what we're working with so far. I'm just going to go and let that, let that settle. I saw that one little rock move again. Stubborn. There we go. Now we're going to let that dry. And then we're going to set up everything for the resin. Now we're going to go ahead and start prepping for the resin stage. So whether you're using the quick dry epoxy or the regular, regular resin epoxy, this is going to need to be done regardless. So I like to just tape down. Oh goodness. You don't need to do this first layer of tape, but I absolutely do not want any resin running anywhere on my pot. It literally ruins all the work that you have worked so hard to achieve. I'm not going to worry too much about it being on the hot glue. Where we paint it over on the hot glue. I just want to make sure that it doesn't actually get on the pot.
then we take our plastic wrap. Take that down. Really make sure that you don't have any bubbles or anything like that. should be good. Make sure that everything is pressed down. Don't have any gaps. Okay. So I'm going to take my five minute epoxy. Now you can use, uh, like I explained in the resin portion, uh, you can use the normal or the one-to-one -one ratio resin. Uh, Again, you just want to use about half a teaspoon or tablespoon, sorry, half a tablespoon um, of each A and B portion, and that should be more than enough. I'll make sure that they don't have any hair. together. And this is where I like to use the plastic bristle brush. The, the brush. Um, you don't have to use one but I like it so I can get right into the crevices there. I don't like using the soft, like the horsetail brushes like these guys, um, only because the resin, it tends to pull the little, the little hairs out and then it gets all stuck in the resin. That's not a good look. We're going to try to move as quickly as possible, try to get as much 
coverage as possible in a short amount of time. So this is where um, your regular resin, it is a bit easier to work with because we do have like 45 minutes that you can you can mess around with where this five minute epoxy you need to get it done right away all right so then I'm gonna go and I'm going to brush through making sure that I'm getting in there So we're just gonna let that sit. So with the uh, the five minutes, so again, I use the JB Weld Clear Weld. I know Gorilla Glue also comes out with this, and then there's uh, there's another brand I can't think of the name, but any like five minute epoxy or even the ten minute epoxy, those will work really well for these these types of crafts. Um, if you are using the regular regular resin, you're gonna want to wait about 24 hours before you move forward. So this, we're gonna let it sit for a couple hours and then we're going to make our final touches and do our final step, which is the sealing and the final coatings. My goodness, this is looking good. So now that everything is dry, everything is settled, I removed the plastic and the taping. Uh, I just went with my black interior paint and I just did some final touch-ups wherever I felt I needed to. So now we're gonna go in with the final sealant. So I'm gonna put this upside down. You're gonna wanna make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area. And then, uh, I also took the tray and I did two layers of the black paint just to get that ready to go. We'll start with the, uh, the pot. So like I said, we have this upside down and that way we can do the whole uh, outside and then we let it dry. This stuff typically dries within an hour. There, sorry, I'm having an issue. So I'm just gonna take a moment just to shake it up. I 
actually check it before before we started here, so it should be good. So now I'm just gonna very easy make a very uh, light but even coat all the way over, all the way over, all the way around, and even onto the rocks. I want those to be super shiny. Once that's done, I like all of the, you, you can stop here if you want the shiny look, you can stop at this stage. But I personally, I like to have the matte look. So after this is all set and dry, I'm gonna go in with the clear matte and I'll show you guys how it looks as a glossy finish and as well with the matte. Now we've waited about an hour or so and now the uh, the first sealant is it's dry. You can see here how it has a lot of shine to it. You can go ahead and just leave it here, but I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna throw on a little bit of matte sealant, and then I'm gonna show you guys the difference. So you can decide if you wanna leave it like this and have that nice shine to it, or you wanna go back to the matte. All right, my matte coat is now dry. It is ready to go. You guys can see the difference. I'm probably gonna go in one more time and do one more coat just to get rid of some of that glare action that's happening. I also chose to do the inside of the pot with the matte. And this just gives you guys an idea of how you would like things if you prefer to do the gloss or if you wanna bring it to the matte. I, again, I personally really like the matte look. Um, now, when I do the matte, I don't do the crystals or the, the glass pieces. I keep that nice and shiny, and then the contrast really shines through. There are plants in there. And also with the lid, I've done three layers of the, the gloss coating. This just gives that extra layer of protection to make sure that the paint doesn't start lifting um, and then it just ruins the overall look. So all together, that's looking pretty good. I'm liking that. <laughs> 